back to that 1994 um, master plan. Um, there are several things in it. I just want to highlight some of the things, um, and you can tell me what you think. Um, one of the things we we're supposed to do is seek to designate local historic districts and eventually national historic districts. Well, I already went over how we tried to do South Union Map. Um, but there's three others that are listed in the master plan that might have some possibilities. Uh, the downtown, the area just south of the downtown, uh, the Market Columbia Broad Street, um, Broadway area, and um, what we call the government emergency housing. And I think this is one of the more interesting ones. Um, this is the area um, along Liberty Street and East. Um, you may have noticed, I hope, that there's a, a bunch of little houses there that kind of look unique. And it was really fun to look into finding out about this. Um, these houses were built as war emergency in 1919. The government designated about or planned about um, six sites around the country that were to where they were going to put their house. By that, they were, they they needed extra workers at factories. For the war effort, they were utilizing factories and towns that were especially on the railroads, um, and they were putting lots of effort into that and putting extra, extra people were coming to work in those cities and they needed housing for them. Um, but Armistice Day was November 11, 1918, so that sounds a little confusing. Um, but they did go ahead with some of these housing projects. They, like I said, there were 60 sites that were planned, and of those 60 sites, 37 of them were actually built, and Alliance has one of them. Um, and here's a picture of what one of them looked like in the publication that got by the government. And you can compare that to um, some of the houses right along there. Kristen, that's on the street, but I couldn't do your house, Kristen, because there were too many trees in front of it. <laughs> um, very unusual looking with this large, extra large brick. Uh, there's three or four different types. Some of them are um, clabbered and some of them are shingled. And it makes a really nice looking neighborhood. Mm -hmm. This is um, this is right next door to Kristen's house. Right? Yeah. Um, and these the the ideas behind these housing houses were pretty important for formulating modern house concepts because they set standards for plumbing and entrances, um, furnaces, and um, light and closets, and the government felt that it was a good idea for them to promote home ownership, that people who owned their homes were good citizens. And these projects represented the first time um, that the government had uh, gotten into housing other than military. This is on Morgan. You can see that they make a nice little unity uh, with their hip roofs and everything. And this is a particularly good one because this one, this particular streetscape hasn't been changed too much. Now one of the problems, of course, is that most of these houses that were originally clabbered have been what I call vinylized. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's a real problem when we're talking about historic preservation and alliance in general. There's, there's, there's a lot of vinyl. <laughs> um, in researching this, I was looking at other cities that got government housing. And one of them was Rock Island, um, Illinois. and They've actually, uh, their preservation society has um, 
done up a tour brochure thing um, in which they take the original drawings of the floor plans or the elevations of the original houses and put them up against um, the way the houses look now. And um, this helps to create a sense of neighborhood and pride in what's been happening in their city. And um, I, I look at this and I wonder, do most of the folks who live over in that area even know the historic significance of, of where they're living? Um, for me, I think, um, you know, since we lost Union Avenue, I think this is one of the most interesting things that we have, is this government edition. 